Hi everyone, it's Nicole and today I'm bringing you a tag video. So Ray over at the Bookmark Chronicles, uh, she did an original tag. She said she's been doing this since she's been blogging, but this, this year was her second time doing this tag on YouTube. And that is the ringing in the new year book tag. And since this is Ray's original tag and she tagged me, I'm going to do this kind of in true Ray fashion and I'm going to do this drunk. So I have uh, truly <laughs> hard seltzer. Um, this is their like holiday flavors. Um, light it up crayon orange sparkler. So um, I'm just going to pop this open. And I got my Cozy Queen wine glass. For those of you who like ASMR. <laughs> so, cheers. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Mm -mm -mm. I love Truly. They have some really great flavors. I like the, like the fruit punches myself, um, but these holiday ones are really good. But let's be honest, this isn't gonna get me drunk, so. Let's just do a shot really quick. Mind you, it's like barely 11. Not even 11. It's a quarter till. Slanja. Ooh, okay. So without further ado, I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. So question number one is what is the best book or series that you've read in 2021? And Ray, in her video, she did both a series and uh, one specific book. So I think I'm going to do that too, because if you didn't know, I read over 365 books this year and just picking one book was a disaster. So I'm going to do series first. And my favorite book series of this year is definitely the Bonnie and Clyde mystery series by Julie and Lindsay. This year, she took a huge step and went into indie publishing, and she created her own publishing house called Cozy Queen Publishing, and these are her first four books in that adventure, and I just thought that was really, really cool. I love Julianne Lindsay. She is a favorite in this house. So this is going to be an eight-book series, but she released the first four this year, first one being Burden of Poof, second one, Seven Deadly Sequins, third one, Beating the Rap, and the fourth one is Islet Witness. Um, the Who Picked This Book Club did live stream discussions for all of these books, so definitely go check those out. But I love, love, love the way Julianne Lindsay writes Cozy Mysteries. She writes them with um, a little heavy on the romance, which is not very on par with other Cozy Mysteries, which is probably why I like them so much because I am predominantly a romance reader. So I am always drawn to the relationships that she creates in these series. And Bonnie, our amateur sleuth in this series, uh, she's a little bit on the older side. She's late 30s. And for me, being in the not my late 30s, but I'm in my early 30s myself, I like seeing the older women protagonist. Um, there's only so many like 18 to 22 year olds that you can read and be like, okay, well, this is no longer who I am. And so it's nice reading that older female character. And if you like cats in your cozy mysteries, uh, she has her furry little sidekick Clyde and it's just, it's so cute. I love the series so, so much. Cannot wait for the rest of the four that come out next year. And then also she has a spinoff of this series as well, uh, Thelma and Louisa. Louisa is a friend that Bonnie meets in the series and she has a hen, her name is Thelma and they have their own spinoff series coming out. The first book is called No Farm, No Foul. And I'm just really, really excited for it, honestly. I do talk about those books in my 22 anticipated releases of 2022, so I'll link that in the cards in the description box for you. And for my best book of 2021, I seriously had like an existential crisis of picking these books because, again, I read predominantly romance, and my two favorite books of last year was Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter and The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. So for a romance reader, her favorite books to be horror books, it was kind of like, who am I? <laughs> but they were so, so good. I read Pretty Girls back in January and The Only Good Indians in February. So it's December, the last day of December, and I'm still thinking about those books. You know they were good. So question number two is what authors have you discovered this year that you would like to read more of? And three just immediately come to the forefront of my brain. And that is RM Virtues, Aveda Vice, 
and Tasha L. Harrison. During the Hoathon over the summer, I had the absolute pleasure to talk with all three of these authors during the Thoughtonomics experts discussions that we had. Again, I'll link those in the cards in the description box for you, but we had such a great time and I, I, I'm so blessed to know each and every one of these people that I have met during the Hoathon. Definitely opened my reading to new and fun things, which kind of just leads into another question. Um, in this so I'm just gonna hold off for now but I absolutely adore every single author that I got to speak to during Hoathon and I am so absolutely thankful to my creators and co-hosts of Hoathon. I love them dearly and it was just a great experience. It was great. It was a great thing to do this year and the fact that it was so well received and everyone had a great time doing it. It was just a light in 2021 you know that it was such a hard year but that was one of the bright spots for sure. Question number three is best book to film or TV adaptation in 2021 or what you're looking forward to in 2022. And for me, that's definitely got to be WandaVision or Loki. Um, these are characters based on the comic books, Marvel comic books. And I just love Wanda and Vision so much. They're probably one of my favorite ships of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I adore them. And uh, Elizabeth Olsen in that series is just fantastic hands down like honestly she should win an award or something because fantastic acting the chemistry between her and Paul Bettany is just oh I freaking cried like a baby you know what episode I'm talking about but I love it I loved it loved it so so much and for um anticipated releases of 2022 um definitely the Game of Thrones prequel even though they freaking butchered the last season of Game of Thrones I'm still gonna be watching you know, the Targaryens take over Westeros. <laughs> it's going to be great. Honestly, as long as the original creators don't have anything to do with it, I think it's going to be fine. <laughs> Question number four is, have your reading habits changed at all this year or have you gotten into any new genres? So my reading habits, I don't think they've changed at all. Honestly, for the last two years going on three years, um, I've been heavily listening to audiobooks during my commute or cleaning the house or shopping. And that's definitely increased my reading. I've always had the goal in my head to read 365 books in a year. And this year I did that. And it was such an accomplishment and I honestly would not have been able to do it unless I read those audiobooks because I don't have like a super long commute but there are just things you have to do as an adult that you're not able to sit down and read 24 7 or as much as you would like so audiobooks really allow you to consume more literature than you would if you were just physically reading. But I guess one thing that I have tried this year is uh, text-to-speech. So I do have a lot of Kindle books in my Kindle, but then also I have a KU subscription. So I do have a lot of books, digital books that, again, you have that issue of having to sit down and physically read it. But text-to-speech is a really good tool to use if you want to get through that digital library that you have, but don't necessarily have the time to just sit and read all these books. So text-to-speech, I know a lot of people use the Alexa app because it just connects right to Amazon, but Alexa doesn't read as fast as Siri does and you can change the reading speed in your settings on your iPhone. Um, you can also change the voice to Siri, which I really like. So the voice that I use when doing text-to-speech I find is most human-like is Siri voice number two. I don't, I don't think she has a name. It's just Siri voice number two. Hi, I'm Siri. Definitely more human, less robotic. So it kind of doesn't sound as strange, but the more you do it, the more you get used to it. And then honestly, after that, you can listen to any audiobook narrator ever. Cause I know a lot of people who listen to audiobooks, they're just like, Oh, the narrator kind of broke me out of this story. And I didn't really enjoy it. Honestly, after getting used to text to speech, you can listen to any narrator and it would be fine. <laughs> And the second part of this question is, have you gotten into any new genres this year? And yes, most definitely. Um, I have been reading and consuming Monster Smut like nobody's business. And I talk a little bit about this when I was invited to speak on the Categorically Romance podcast with Brie and Sarah. Uh, that episode just dropped on Wednesday, so I'll link that in the description box for you. But they asked, like, why is that? Like, why is Monster Smut so appealing to a lot of readers? And for me, I can't answer for everybody, but for me personally, it's because I want to get as far away from the actual reality as I can. Because everyone, everyone's had a really rough year and two years, honestly. And for me, reading Monster Smut just gets me out of the here and now and into something that's totally different 
and out of this world that I just love it. And honestly, you can say it's a coping mechanism and I'm okay with that. And honestly, why are we reading books if not for the escapism? Question number five is favorite ship. It could be romantic or platonic of the year or your new favorite character. And that is going to be Grady and Everly from the Seaside Cafe series. This is the latest book in the series, Partners in Lime. I did have the pleasure of reading Pleading the Fish, which is out next year in March, which is the final book in the Seaside Cafe series, which when I heard the series was ending, I was devastated. This series really got me into cozy mysteries. This was my first dip into Julianne Lindsay because Brie Baker is one of her pen names and this just started the Julianne Lindsay love for me and this started the cozy mystery love for me. I read some cozy mysteries before uh, Brie Baker or Julianne Lindsay but honestly this was the first one that was just like I really really freaking like this genre. Grady and Everly their relationship and growth over the years of this book is just so freaking wonderful and sweet. Their chemistry just comes off the page. I love them so, so much, even though, yeah, it's a cozy, it's not really a romance, but they fight it, you know, they fight their, they don't necessarily fight their attraction. They fully acknowledge that they are attracted to each other and they care about each other. But in this book, um, Everly, the swan women of her family, they believe that they are cursed in love. So she kind of uses that as an excuse to keep him at a distance. And Grady, he just lost his first wife. She died and he has a little boy to raise. And so he kind of uses that at first. You know, it's like, I have this little boy. I'm. It's not just me. I have to be careful who I let into my life because I can't allow my son to lose anyone else. Once they get over that and they get into this relationship with each other, oh, Grady is just so romantic and he, you know, he's the alpha, he's the protector. And I just love that in men. So I love these two so, so much. Honestly, like, yes, I read the final book. It's out next year. And honestly, this is probably a series that I'm going to reread every single year because I just love it so, so much. Question number six is, have you started planning your 2022 TBR? And yes, I have. Um, I am a part of multiple book clubs. I'm a part of multiple read-alongs. So for my own book club, Who Picked This Book Club, we already have January and February set up. Like they are events on YouTube that you can set a reminder for. But we do have tentative books that we want to read through July. But again, if our tastes change and we want to read something else, those those other books are subject to change. But January and February are pretty much set in stone. So the books that we're going to read in January are Skin of the Sea by Natasha Bowen. We're reading this January 5th. Yes, 5th. Um, again, I'll have it linked in the cards in the description box so you can set a reminder. And then January 19th, we are reading The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. And then for February, I don't have the physical copies of these books, but the first book we're reading in February is How to Love a Duke in 10 Days by Kerrigan Byrne and Real by Kennedy Ryan. And then we also have our late night special book picked out. So for the Who Picked This Book Club, we have a late night special book, which we talk about a more erotic or taboo romance. And for January, that is going to be Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. Uh, trigger warnings for rape and sexual assault if you are going to be listening to the audiobook. The new special edition paperback, but then I think also the ebook. Uh, don't quote me on this because I don't know. I just reread the first chapter of the new special edition and it doesn't have the rape scene in there, but I cannot attest to the Kindle book. But I know the audiobook will still have that rape scene in there if you do listen to audiobooks. So just be careful. But it, again, it's just that first chapter. The first chapter is very rough because Georgie and the other women, they were abducted by aliens and the aliens were not very nice, uh, rape, sexual assault, and they're going to be sold to other aliens on this planet as slaves, but they crash land on the ice planet and they are saved by the Sakwi, which is the blue aliens, which are the good guys. So um, that first chapter is really rough. So please be cautious when you're going in there. And honestly, I was talking to Izzy and you could probably skip that first chapter if you are you know super triggered by that but you still want to read this book or get the special edition um it's beautiful again i don't know about the kindle version i don't know if ruby dixon changed the kindle version as well i don't want anybody to be triggered by the books that we read so i definitely want to give you fair warning in advance for that okay and I'm a part of another book club the swoon sisters i host that with deja over at deja's book world uh for 
the December book, we're having the live stream in January. So I'll probably read it in January. But January 3rd, we are having a live stream discussion for The Highwayman by Kerrigan Byrne. So I'll be reading that. And then also we have the first quarter books picked out for January, February, and March of next year. So January is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. The February book is Flock by Kate Stewart. And the March book is The Sweetest Oblivion by Danielle Laurie. I am also a part of the Uncle Rick's read along with Brie over at the Locked Booktician. So this year we started with Percy Jackson and then we moved on to Kane Chronicles and Magnus Chase, Trials of Apollo and Heroes of Olympus. So we did all of those books, basically all of Rick Riordan's books. But now we are continuing the Uncle Rick's read along with the Uncle Rick Presents line. You'll see a lot of the books over there. So those are going to be books um, like Arusha by Roshani Chofsky, Tristan Strong by Kwame Mabalia. So we are going to be reading all of those books next year. Super, super excited. I do have a few of those books already scheduled on YouTube. So definitely I will link that in the cards in the description box for you so you can set your reminders. But for January, we're going to be finishing up Trials of Apollo and we're going to be reading The Tyrant's Tomb on January 6th and The Tower of Nero on January 20th. Also in January, I'm going to be co-hosting a pop culture readathon round. It's going to be the Buffy the Vampire Slayer round. I've already released my announcement in my TBR. Again, that'll be linked in the description box and the cards for you. I did also release my 22 anticipated releases of 2022. So I'm going to be trying my best to read those books next year. And then the Hoathon creators are going to be working on a new round, hopefully in the first quarter of the new year. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Question number seven is, will you participate in any readathons or challenges in the new year? And of course, I always do the Goodreads challenges, but my main method of tracking my reading is going to be Storygraph. Um, I'm going to take a page out of Bray's book, and she says that her review on Goodreads is just going to be the link to her Storygraph review, and I just think that is the fucking best. So I'm going to be doing that same thing. <laughs> the credit all goes to Ray. I'm just going to be using this idea because I think it's amazing. But yeah, I'm going to be doing my like challenge. I'm probably going to make it 300 books next year. Yes. Yeah, of course, I'm going to be doing the pop culture readathon. There is a Storygraph challenge. Again, I'll link that. And then I also created a challenge on Storygraph. I want to tackle the In Death series by J.D. Robb. Book 55 is going to be releasing next year. I've already read books one through five. It's a lot. So with the books that are currently out right now, I have to read five books a month, which to me isn't bad, but five books by the same author in the same series can be kind of redundant. So I hope I don't get burned out. I also want to do like some sort of A to Z challenge, which I'm currently working on that on Storygraph as well. I'm making that Storygraph challenge. Um, so I'm going to look at all of my physical titles that I have in my physical library, and it's either going to be the title or the author name A to Z. I'm going to write them on a piece of paper. I'm going to have a TBR jar, and I'm just going to pick randomly. And those are the books I'm going to be reading. And that's just an effort to read more of the physical books that I already own. Also, Ray over at the Bookmark Chronicles, she is hosting her Game of Tomes readathon that's happening in March. The origin story was just this year, but she's doing like the full readathon, I think, in March. So I'm definitely going to be participating in that. The first round was a lot of fun. It's kind of like a create your own adventure, which I just did all of the adventures again because I'm extra. And question number eight, the final question is any New Year's resolutions, goals, reading, blogging um, in 2022? And I always have the New Year's resolution to be more diligent in tracking my reading and doing my reading spreadsheet and writing more. I want to write every day. If not every day, I want to write every week, not just during NaNoWriMo. I want to be more consistent in my uploads for y'all. I know I'm very sporadic. I don't ever have. The only thing that's really consistent for me are my book clubs and my read-alongs, but I'm hoping to fix that. I don't think I'll be able to do three videos a week. That is a lot. I want to drop a video like Mondays or Tuesdays and also have like the live streams Wednesdays and Thursdays. The Wednesday and Thursday live streams are going to be every other, so I might do like a sit-down video like on the off weeks of Wednesday and Thursday, but I just got to be diligent. Like when I have time, I can't just like sit around and do nothing. I have to like batch film because I know that's that is the key to being consistent is batch filming editing is just such a fucking drag for me I hate editing so much 
But yeah, those are all of the questions for the ringing in the new year book tag. Ray, thank you so much for tagging me. I know it's already kind of the new year, but if you haven't done this tag and you want to do it, definitely go for it. I'm going to tag Whitney over at Books With Me just so she has some content she can make for her channel. <laughs> She honestly just created a channel so she could do an author interview with RM and then she said bye. <laughs> All right, so um, if you want to answer any of the questions in the comments, go for it. Go ahead and like my video if you did. Comment below and subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on all the social media platforms. The links will be in the description box below. We'll see you next time, Avid Readers.